Hey guys, how are you today? It's Mo from Programmer Tube. Today I want to show you how to count number of bits of an integer in C, C++. So if you're interested, let's jump right into it. This video is going to be based on our previous video on how to print out a number in binary format in C, C++. So make sure to watch that video first before you watch this one. Okay, so here I am on Visual Studio. I'm gonna open up the project from previous video. It's called Print Binary. Click on that. Okay, so previously we saw how we can actually convert an integer into a binary format and print it out on the screen. Today, let's see how we can actually count the number of bits inside a decimal integer. So let's create together a function called bit count. So let's say we give it an integer number n. We want to return to the caller the number of bits inside that number. So how do we solve this? One way to solve it is to consider the size of this integer in binary format. In our case here, our integer is going to be 32 bit because we're on Windows and we're using the 32 bit version. So given that information, we can simply do something like this. We can do a for loop for integer i equals zero, i is less than 32 plus plus i. So the idea here is that we're gonna loop through every single bit and check if it actually is set on that number then increment a counter that way we know how many bits are set so we can say if one shifted left by i we end this with our integer number if that is true they're gonna have to plus plus some counter here so let's set it initially to zero and then increment the count and then return the count to the caller so this is one way to do it the drawback to this implementation is that it's hard coding the size of integer However, let's first see it in action and then consider a different approach to do this. Okay, so let's go back here to our main function. We have a loop here that prints out all integers from 0 to 256 in binary format. In addition to that, I'm going to add bits equals percentage D, then here add bit count for I. Okay, so let's run this Control F5 on the keyboard. This should compile and run. Okay, so now as you can see here, the numbers are actually shown in binary, then followed by the bit count. So 255 has 8 bits, 254 has 7 bits, and then for example, 240 has 4 bits, so this is working correctly. Let's check the numbers at the beginning. Here 0 has 0 bits, 1 has 1 bit, 3 has 2 bits, 4 has 1, 5 has 2, 7 has 3, so this is working correctly. Alright, so let's go back to our function here. Like I said, the only drawback is that we're hard coding the number of bits here. How about we do this differently so that it's not related to the number of bits and it's not always a fixed size loop. Let's make it depend on the number itself. So let's remove this and simplify it more. Let's say while n is greater than 0, we can say n equals n divided by 2. Instead of dividing by 2, it's better to actually use the right shift operator. Shifted right by 1, or we can just simply say, and shifted right equals 1. Now we can here say, if n and 1, we always look at the rightmost bit and see if it's set or not. In that case, if it's set, we just say count plus plus. Then n should be divided by 2 by shifting it one bit to the right. This loop is going to be dependent on n, so it's not going to always be a for loop of 32 bit iterations, plus it's not tied to the number of bits. So let's run this and see how it goes. Control F5. Yes. Okay, so here as you can see, it's given me the same output and it's different implementation for the same function. The very bottom here, 255 is 8 bits and then 240 is 4 bits. So yeah, this is another way to implement this. And I think this is a similar way to do it. There are many ways to implement this. However, I just wanted to show you two different ways to do it in this video. I hope you like my video. Please don't forget to share with your friends. Subscribe to my channel for more videos. And thank you for watching.